Hello and welcome Gibbons to Gibbon Gamers with me, me, Chunny of GG and I am bringing you TEW 2016 running the company Gibbon Gamers Wrestling. Now you may hear some background noise, I have a housemate and he is here tonight. So, um, right, yes, uh, Gibbon Gamers Wrestling, this has been our little pet project. Um, and it's been, it has been little, we haven't exactly done outstanding attendance figures. Um, but, if I click on this, we are starting to grow in popularity. Um, if you can really call that growth. Um, now, I'm tempted to take a, a high risk strategy for the next two months to try and get us you know, where we need to be. Um, Although it might not be particularly smart. It, well, it might not be smart, but I, I do need to do something to try and get us get us rolling. Because at the moment, we are, we're we not really going anywhere. However, the problem with this high-risk strategy that I'm considering uh, adopting just to get us on the move is that it means we'll definitely not be able to afford anybody even remotely good. And what do I keep saying? I'm just sort of saving as a Twitch reaction at the moment. Don't pay any attention to that. There's a few things we need to do. First of all, production. Now, at the moment, we are s distributing our events through DVD and home video. I'm going to change that to internet. Wait, what's yeah, none? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, what would be the point of none? Uh, as nothing needs to be produced. But we're not actually getting anything. No, I'm going to say the internet. Um, uh, anyway, what this means is we get as it gets put to the internet, and it gives us access to a larger number of fans. Um, but we won't get uh, we won't get any money from it, and we certainly won't have any uh, you know certainly nothing from DVD and home video. But but. It should see us uh, grow faster, uh, the, but that's not the end of this high risk strategy. What I'm going to do is schedule, this, this could be a potentially silly move, but we'll, we'll see. We're going to add a, a monthly event that's going to run halfway through the month as well as the regular monthly event. But first of all, this is going to be the actual, the one that, you know, is Sweet Pe Creeping Death, Grapple Fest. Nah, Over the Limit, no. Oh, actually, I like that, Over the Limit. Let's, let's go for GGW Over the Limit. Um, this will be sort of the, I guess, the pay-per-view type of deal. Um, this will be the usual Sunday, week four. Uh, and August, yes, is the is the next month. So, and all this needs to just remain, uh, let's say, a year as well. Save and exit that. So that's going to be the next one. As and uh, oh, I'm tempted. I'm very tempted to give this a shot. Okay, let's take a look and see how this goes. For this is the high risk strategy that I'm thinking of. So let's just go for solid. Or a GGW solid. Uh, it's going to be an hour because also I can. If I went for a weekly show that cost that was any more than an hour, I'd be dead. Um, so brand, yeah, that would be cool. Name numbered. Let's go for numbered, and then I have to type in a number for that. So it'll be numbered one. Scenes and finale. No, none, 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 none. Anywhere annual. No. Weekly. This is going to be... That's going to... Now, I don't think we should go on Monday. I think we should go on Tuesday. Yeah. Or Wednesday. No. Yes, Wednesday. Because then we're not going up against any of the WWE shows. So that would be cool. Right, save and exit. Right. So there we go. We have our two new events. We're going to have Over the Limit at the end of the month. And we're going to have GG Solid. And we're going to have Solid running all the way through it. Now, the plan for that will be... We can use some other people for that. Well, I'm hoping so anyway. Um, I'm just trying to consider who would be useful right now. Is uh, Eddie Ryan a face? Yes, he is. Okay, that might be a good little match for the next pay per view, for the next show. PJ versus. Or maybe Alan De Silva versus Eddie Ryan. 
Um, and my obviously my new champion is Luke Phoenix, because uh, Luke Phoenix is actually doing really well. Uh, well, hopefully he is. Anyway, let's let's get on with this. Let's get to GGW Solid and um, see what happens along the way. Uh, usual formula. The preamble's been a bit long, so let's go. Uh, something I will do, uh, if this video goes on too long uh, in the edit, then I will uh, just cut it down so that we only do maybe um, two, two shows a video. Um, but for the, I'm going to try and include the whole month in this one video. So, uh, right, what are, we go, what are we doing here? Any big companies? New Japan, obviously, and uh, they had 5,969 people in attendance for an 87 show rating. And the main event: Tomohiro Ishii, Kazuchika Okada, and Cody. I assume Rhodes defeated Yuji Nagata, Yoshi Tatsu, and Togi Makabe for 92s. That's quite good. Uh, we also have Stardom Masters Tour, 740 people there to see this one, and 58 show rating, with the main event being Kairi Hojo defeated Blue Nikita and Hiroyu Matsumoto to retain the Wonder of Stardom title for a 69, which was the best match of the card, so that was good. That was genuinely quite good uh, for them, but I need to try and up that a little bit. WWE Raw! 10,439 people in attendance for an 80 show rating and Dolph Ziggler defeated John Cena he did okay uh, for an 84 rating well there we go and here we have NXT 3,309 people in attendance for a 53 rating, and Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, also known as DOI, defeated the Revival by Countout for a 57. Oh dear. And WWE Smackdown. 11,744 people in attendance for a 79 rating, and Samoa Joe went to a no contest with Randy Orton for an 86. But now, for the first time ever, we book GGW Solid. Also, referencing Metal Gear Solid with that name. Anyway, we've got Danny Walsh and Zaya Brookside working elsewhere. Okay, locker room incident with the Sandman. Clearly hung over. Oh dear. Yeah, just a stern warning. Oh, he was annoyed at me giving him a stern warning. Well, you shouldn't have turned up stone drunk, should you, Sandman? Dear God. Right, ticket, where are we going? Let's just uh, pick the best venue. Oh, a generic venue's been used. Anyway, but the other reason why I'm doing this weekly thing now is I'm trying to capitalise on this rising wrestling industry and rising economy so that hopefully the ticket sales and our momentum increases much faster. Now, I'm going to do Eddie Ryan versus PJ Jones, I think. So I'm going to have an interview with Hype. And I'm going to have PJ Jones do the talking... Uh, he's going to go about a script, he's going to hype his match with the English Lion, Eddie Ryan. And we're going to have this match go on for about half an hour. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to kill both workers. Oh, we have Alan Cole available to us, do we? How much does he cost us again? Uh, screw it. But that's good news. It's good to know that we have Alan Cole available to us. And it's also interesting to note that we actually have Kari Hojo available to us as well because she is actually getting popular around here. Also another reason why I'm going to do these bigger, uh, trying to get some popularity going quicker is because, right, so heels always go first, and Eddie Ryan. So I think we're going to have, we're going to have the PJ. We're going to have the winner win this one. And um, I am going to start trying to make this bit more interesting by doing some of those weird things. Yes. Uh, let's not do a call in the ring because uh, I think Eddie Ryan's rating is slow, is very low for psychology, and I forgot to up that. Yes, it is. Right, so there we go. That'll be the match. It won't be because I need to sign a road agent, and that's going to have to be Adam Bullivant for the moment because we don't have two. <laughs> Eddie Ryan was unhappy at the booking of this match and looked like he was planning to complain if he had a change of heart after noticing the intimidating sight of PJ cracking his knuckles and glaring. Okay, PJ I can imagine glaring at people, but maybe not knuckle, maybe not the knuckles thing. Uh, anyway, there we go. 
that's the match, uh, and maybe maybe we won't take a a. Um, oh no, it gets several uses out of there. I'm wondering if we actually will get a, um, m you know, morale hit on PJ. I'm also turning down my mic down, so hopefully it won't pick up my housemate quite as much. Um, right, so let's also do that freestyle angle for Aaron Paul because I need to run the show at a profit if I can. Sends the fans home. Uh, let's run that for six minutes. And Aaron Paul is going to be rated on his entertainment. We're not going to give him a script because he can carry this without a script. And away we go. PJ Jones had an interview hyping his upcoming singles match with Eddie Ryan and it got the show off to a strong start and the angle got the crowd hotter. Uh, low locker room morale though, morale though is hurting. Um, it didn't do any good, a good job of improvising unfortunately. Uh, and in a decent match PJ Jones defeated Eddie Ryan in 29 minutes and 58 seconds by pinball with an Emerald Fusion. And that gives him a 40, and it was a 43 so that's okay. PJ is be getting better. Eddie Ryan has debuted his gimmick at Scott Below Average. They have great chemistry and it showed in their performances. Uh, could have done a better job putting the thing together. This match got the crowd hotter. PJ in ring performance of 45. Eddie 35. Any particular reason? Wow, PJ. Wow, there's nothing up here for Eddie. Okay. But holding back inconsistency. Stamina! Really? Wow, okay. I'm going to have to up that because. Uh, if there's anything that Eddie Ryan is weak at, it's not stamina. Um, but anyway, that's low morale and low locker morale. Yeah, that's gonna that low locker morale is gonna tank her ratings quite badly. And he didn't do well without a script to follow, even though he's done well with that in the past. Did Adam Paul? Anyway, he sent the fans home, and that was a show. 21 people attended that one. Um, our overall rating was 28. Oh, uh, the usual thing as well. Just all of the all of the you know, production penalties applied. Let's take a look at the big companies besides us. <laughs> besides us, Impact Wrestling, 2,470 people with a 58 show rating, and Cody I seen Rose defeated Lashley I seen Bobby for the TNA World Heavyweight Title for a 77. So has that done us any good? Wow, that's actually, wow, that's really hurt us. Our profits are, are terrible there, but uh, they would be for the moment. Out of interest, has that improved the sponsorship? Yeah, it has a bit. It might, uh, we haven't even increased our size, but what decimal have we increased it by? If I go into this and go to Gibbon Gamers Wrestling and popularity, Oh, 0 0.1. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right, okay, this is probably going to be a bad idea. Um, getting a very real sensation that this is a bad plan. What I'm doing here may not have been particularly smart. Um, anyway, PJ now has a quite a good rub from that, so he's now quite over. Eddie Ryan actually didn't... I also need to... Give him. I need. To, I need to improve his stamina. I think I've given Dimitri. Yeah. Okay. Now Eddie Ryan's a lot. Got a lot better stamina than Dimitri. So let's just solve that problem. Um, I'm not going to adjust anything else. But Eddie Ryan does have good stamina. So we're going to adjust that. Um, skills. Stamina. I think into the seven. Maybe just. Flat 80 would be would be acceptable. No, flat 80. That was a quick too far. There we go. Save that record. Um, right. So that was wasn't great. We have Ring of Honor. 4,086 people in attendance for a 64 show rating, which saw Will Ospreay defeat Mark Briscoe in the main event for an 83. We have Mail. Zack Sabre Jr. is going to tour with Dragon Gate Pro Wrestling. Right, we have New Japan Pro Wrestling, 4,039 people in attendance for an 87 rating, and in the main event, Red Dragon defeated the Dynamite Express for a 91. That was good, that was good. Stardom, Electric Army Attack, 2,962 people in attendance for a 54 rating, and in the main event, Curry, Hojo and the Legion of Death defeated Eevee, Jungle Koyona and Miko Satomura 
for a 56. Um, it's okay. This could be worse, considering them. And we have mail. Uh, Cody Rhodes is going to tour with Dragon Gate. Uh, Candice LeRae is going to tour with Diana. And Nightshade and Marty Skrull have begun dating. We have Lucha Underground. Uh, 2,693 people in attendance for a 58 show rating and Dante Fox and Hitakiri defeated Killshot on London for a 65. Uh -uh, we have New Japan Pro Wrestling on the go. 4,000 people in a sellout at the, at the Otaro Gymnasium. 82 show rating and Davey Boy Smith Jr. defeated Manoru Suzuki for the IWGP Intercontinental title and that did an 81. So that's quite a big win for Davey Boy Smith. Uh, Stardom Masters Tour. 523 in attendance for a 56 rating, and Kairi Hojo, Blue Nikita, and Santana Garrett defeated Konami, Chris Wolf, and Mako Sato Mura for a 62. So that's quite good. Right then, New Japan Pro Wrestling. 5,842 in attendance for an 87 rating, and Taishi, Ricochet, and Mark Briscoe defeated Rocky Romero, Adam Cole, baby, and Kyle O'Reilly for a 90 rating. That's okay, it's quite good. Stardom Masters Tour, 802 in attendance for a 62 rating. Kairi Hojo defeated Blue Nikita to retain the Wonder of Stardom title for a 72. That was good. That's very good by their standards, actually. WWE Monday Night Raw, 11,066 people in attendance for a 78 rating, in which <laughs> Baron Corbin went to a no contest with the Viper, Randy Orton, for a 79. Which, I mean... Oof. Yeah, that, that really could have been better. NXT! 3,516 people in attendance for a 54 rating. And in the main event, the glorious Bobby Roode, Alexander Wolfe and Sawyer Fulton defeated Johnny Gargano and TM61 for a 62. Smackdown! 11,371 with an 83 show rating. And Chris Jericho defeated Samoa Joe by disqualification for a 90. Here we go. It's time to book GGW Solid 2. And for our convenience, the Sheppey Islands. No, that's just not going to work. 26 fans are expected. Oh, shit, son. It's getting real. It's getting real. Right, now I need to work out who I can uh, afford. I think it should be something of an affordable show. So what about B Priestley versus Bobby Tyler? Would that be okay? Has either one of them got good mic skills? No, so neither of them can do an interview, really. Well, not one that would really help us out. How much can he six? How much does he cost? 270 per show. Does he have the stamina? He does have stamina. What about if I put him up against filthy Chris Walker? That wouldn't be a terrible idea, I don't think. Hmm. Testing out ideas, thinking of ideas. How much does she cost for us now? 820 per show. Ye yes, but I think we'll save her for the big end of month Matt, uh, show. Zaya Brookside. Oh, maybe. Yeah, okay, we'll go with Zaya Brookside versus B. Priestley. That's what we're going to do. But we're going to can't actually run that. So what we're going to have is a generic promo just to uh, kick the show off and that's going to be his Aaron Paulness hopefully he won't botch the script this time uh, I didn't check to see either one of these girls stamina rating so, but if I keep it to 25 it shouldn't be too bad Zaya Brookside is working elsewhere isn't she screw it Nixon Yule wait I should probably check how much Nixon Yule costs before I do that um, right, let's just save that for a moment. All right, okay, let's save that. Yeah, okay, Adam Boulevard, right. Let's just check. How much does she cost, and is that going to kill me? S six, 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 eighty. Right, okay. Um, damn. Is, is, the, is the response to that. Candice is very expensive, obviously. Um, who else was I looking at? Who was, was going to be 320? Sorry, Bobby Tyler, that was it. Yeah. Right, Bobby Tyler then. No, not that. That's not the screen. Yep. Uh, Bobby Tyler. 
Let's use Bobby Tyler. There we go. Change that. Uh, match will be storytelling because I can't. Thanks to my Victor. We'll go be Priestley. Uh, open. Can they call it in the ring? Probably best to keep it scripted. Let's go for the slow build. Um, and let's all. Let's go for a. Uh, tainted win. Um, no, cheap. Let's go for cheap. And there we go. And let's also have another. I'm actually just doing the promo thing now just to save the time from typing, but here we go. Um, and Paul so close to show because he's amazing. Uh, <laughs> Paul promo 2. <laughs> oh, this is. <coughs> I hope that works. Anyway, that will be the show. Aaron Paul will cut a promo. B Priestley will face Bobby Tyler, and Aaron Paul will cut another promo. I expect this isn't going to do the best of ratings, but it shouldn't be too expensive to run. Or at least that's my hope. Uh, so, cuts the backstage promo. This got the angle. Got it off to a strong start. Good. The crowd got hotter. And it was 36 rating. Low lock and movement morale. So, but it's a 36. So, that's okay. Ah. Okay, so B Priest C in ring performance of 34. Bobby Tyler in ring performance of 41. Um, although Bobby Tyler, Bobby Tyler has, yeah, a lot more of these things going for her, apparently. B Priest C inconsistency. The low lock and morale is killing these ratings, by the way. They're probably all 10 lower than they should be. And wow, he worked the crowd well. That was good. So, what was the end show rating? 27. Yeah, I didn't think it'd be good. But we've increased our popularity. So, there we go. Right then, Impact Wrestling also ran. Uh, they did 2,685 with a 55 rating. And James Storm defeated Kingston, Lashley, and EC3 for a 69 rating. Uh, and there was NXT TakeOver Brooklyn! 2,643 in attendance, 66 rating. And in the main event, the glorious Bobby Roode defeated Shinsuke Nakamura to retain the NXT Heavyweight title for 74. Ring of Honor. 4,246 in attendance for a 60 rating, and the Briscoe brothers defeated Nick Jackson and Bully Ray for a 73. Okay, that's okay. Now I forgot to check something. How did that do for us? Actually, he hasn't sent that too far up, actually. Oh wait, no, because it's of course this, this one, yeah. Okay, so that actually didn't double the worker costs that because the worker costs were something like 2,100 for the other show, weren't they? So actually that's about 200 less. Uh, estimated costs. Estimated sponsorships, 725. Well, that has shot up. Um, wow, that really has shot up. Um, eight momentum now. What about the popularity? We're on three. Okay, so we are leap. So that's a big leap. Uh, okay, so this month of doing these weekly shows may actually work out for the better. I'm also trying a little bit of a new format for these things. I'm sort of just um, going to include all of the management stuff as is. I'm not going to edit the, the decisions that I'm making there, so hopefully you can see more of the actual booking side of it. Um, but I'm thinking that we'll make the videos a bit longer, so it's going to have to just be a case of putting up with that trade-off I think. I don't want to make the videos too boring that's why I'm putting music on in the background of all these things um, so hopefully you know it's still enjoyable. Uh, New Japan ran 6,495 in attendance which is very good by their standards and an 80 show rating so Davey Boy Smith Jr, Kazo Chika Okada and Cody I assume Rhodes defeated Tomohiro Ishii, Yoshi Tatsu and Yuji Nagata for an 80 rating. And Lucha Underground is running 2,742 people in attendance with a 59 show rating. And the main event was Rey Mysterio, Killshot in London, defeated Dante Fox, Ito Kiri and Jeremiah Crane for a 70 rating. Which is quite good. Uh, oh, Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor. 7,092 in attendance. That's good. 
68 show rating and Bobby Fish defeated Alex Shelley by countout for an 80. Which is good, but the match before it, Adam Cole, baby, defeated BJ Whitmer for an 86 rating. And actually, whilst Adam Cole is there, seriously, Dirty Music, hurry up and release Undisputed Era's theme song, I want it now. And also, also, Kari Hojo's theme song. Now that she's got a new one, and I assume you intend to keep it, release it, please. I want them both. New Japan. 6,101 people, so they are doing some better attendances now. 84 rating. Killer Elite Squad defeated King Ace in the main event for 86. Stardom Masters Tour. 813 attendance for a 60 rating. Kyrie Hojo and the Legion of Death defeated Santana Gara and State of Mind for a 60 rating. Which is okay, until you look at Io Shirai defeated Blue Nikita to retain the World of Stardom title for 78. Why aren't they putting their title in the main event? It's weird. We have mail though. Ricochet has received a contract extension from whoever they are. <laughs> I don't recognise those initials. New Japan Pro Wrestling. 6,903 people in attendance for a 90 rating, so this is a good one. Kazuchika Okada defeated Hiroshi Tanahashi to retain the IWGP World Heavyweight title for a 92. Yeah, that's good. That is very good. Stardom Masters Tour. 801 in attendance for a 52 rating. And in the main event, Hiromi Mimura, Miko Satomura and Chris Wolf defeated Santana Garrett, Haro Matsumoto and Eevee for a 48. Which, I mean, when you look at the match before it, Kairi Hojo defeated Konami to retain the Wonder of Stardom title for a 73. Hmm. WWE Raw. 11,482 in attendance, so they're slowly creeping up. A 77 show rating. Uh, the main event, The New Day. Biggie and Kofi Kingston defeated Rusev and Braun Strowman. 70. Wow. Braun Strowman? Okay, that's a 71 rating. Which is bullshit, because it's Rusev Day! So everybody should really have loved that match, but apparently, apparently it doesn't work like that in this game. You have mail. Zack Sabre Jr. has uh, received a contract extension offer from Progress. Why do I do that? I keep on reading that completely backwards. Shock the system. Okay, NXT was running. 3,444 people attended with a 52 rating and in the main event Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa defeated Black and No Jose by DQ for a 57 and Smackdown 11,128 in attendance for an 83 rating and in the main event Chris Jericho defeated Luke Gallows for an 86 and we have mail uh, so Joe Hendry has received a contract extension from NGW and Ricochet has extended his contract with LF. Right, let's run GGW Solid 3. Oh, we've got a lot of people working elsewhere at the moment for this one. B Priestley, Bubblegum, Danny Walsh, Kelly Six, Morgan Webster, Ricochet, and Zyde Brookside. So I'm quite limited. Locker room incidents. Eddie Ryan and the Sandman. Eddie Ryan was a jerk and eventually threw a punch at the Sandman. It was a bad move as, as he got beaten up as a result. Uh, look, let's just stern warning him because he got beat up. Uh, Bobby Tyler and Matt Seidel. Uh Bobby Tyler, oh, you fool! Accused of being an hour late to pick up her assigned travel partner. The judge, Matt Seidel, found her guilty and sentenced her to pay for her travel partner's meals for the next three shows. And her behaviour has improved, so that's good. That's the thing I do like about Bressler's Court. Sometimes it improves things. But, um,. These other notable factors are really, really mounting up for us. Uh, anyway, let's take a look. 30 fans are expected. Let's just pick the best venue. Um, Ad Angle. It's going to be, I'm sorry, it's going to be formulaic for a while, but we're just doing this to, maxim, to maximize some profits. Aaron Paul is going to talk. What match shall we do? One on one. Let's say it runs for 25 minutes. 
because then it's not too long so we don't lose. And uh, who do we actually have available to us? We have Alan Cole. How much does Alan Cole cost us again? Uh, let's just take a look. Uh, do these guys include people who aren't with us? No, it includes the people who aren't with us tonight. Alan Cole is 880 per show. Uh, not getting the rub in the UK though. Adam De Silva is a good idea actually. Actually, Adam De Silva is a wonderful idea against Chris Andrews. That would be. Yeah, let's let's do that. I do like the idea of that with the winner being the one who faces Luke Phoenix, maybe. I like yeah, okay, let's what week are we on? Week three, okay. Maybe that should be next week then. We'll do that next week, actually. So what about what's the Tick Ryan doing at the moment? Nothing, is he? I wonder if he could maybe go up against K6. That could work. Uh, what? Mark Walsh, um, yeah, a bit too me. Mark Manson would be not the greatest of stamina, but cheap. So, uh, yeah, okay, let's run that. That's what we're going to do. Uh, it's going to be for 25 minutes, which would, if Mark Manson is actually watching this, he'd be like, what? You want to put me in the ring for that long? Wait, is me Mark Manson? He's not even a heel, is he? I was about to put him against, I was about to do face on face. That would have resulted in a penalty. Okay, Maximo Jr. I don't think Maximo Jr. is too. No, because he's also fake. What am I doing? I just replaced the face with the face. Duh. Well done. Well done, genius boy. Sitting here, sitting in this chair, booking this show is a genius. Okay, Dmitry Ivanov then versus Dirty Dick Riley. Um, oh, that's gonna. Yeah, it's just. There's no way Dimitri could work that in real life at all. Um, open. He may get defended by that. He may not. A script. Slow build. Oh my god, please let it be slow. <laughs> right, so uh, at least oh yeah, Adam Boulevard will be the road agent for that. So there we go. That's going to be Dirty Dick Riley versus Dimitri. Dirty Dick is going over. Just checking the cost of Dimitri Ivanov. 370. What? He cost that? Oh, I should check that. No, it's okay. Still less than a thousand on wrestlers for the match. So that would be about. Factor everybody in. Yeah, that should. Show cost should be around 2,000, I imagine. But cost wouldn't be too much. Anyway, let's have uh, a promo. Uh, let's actually make it. Um. See, I don't know if using the worker twice means I have to pay them twice. Because technically it's two appearances on a show, so I'm going to go with Aaron Paul. Again. Uh, also name. Promo 2. There we go. And that's going to be the show. Aaron Paul cuts a promo. Dimitri Ivanov versus Dirty Dick Riley. And Aaron Paul promo 2. So away we go! How do we do? Aaron Paul cuts a backstage promo. Aaron Paul was very poor when trying to improvise dialogue. Strong start. Got the crowd hotter. 23 rating, so that really was bad. The low locker room morale, I think, is going to have to be... I'm going to have to take a look at that. 31 people in attendance, though, so that's good. In a decent match, Dirty Dick Riley defeated Dmitry Ivanov in 24-33 by pinfall with a springboard moonsault. Uh, this match got the crowd hotter. Dmitry had an in-ring performance of 18. Yeah, probably because of his stamina really hurting him. Dirty Dick Riley had an in-ring performance of 59. Dmitry Ivanov got a bonus for charisma though. Oh, that's okay. Dirty Dick Riley's actually got quite a lot of things going for him, actually, to be fair. So he might be... Yeah, stamina, struggling with the slow build, was things that affected Dimitri. The holding back and low locker room morale, that affected Dirty Dick Riley as well. But that's quite a good match rating. I thought that might be just touching the 40s or getting into it, but actually the mid-40s is quite... I'm quite happy with that. 
And Aaron Paul cuts an Aaron Paul cuts another backstage promo. He struggled when going off script again, um, but uh, got a thirty-one rating. Twenty-four, and oh dear, Dimitri was were used too much. But the uh, no storylines were advanced during the show as well. That was a problem. The show increased our popularity in one region. I forgot about that. We need more interesting storylines, and we need to progress them. Impact Wrestling. 2,608 people in attendance, 56 show rating. James Storm defeated Homicide for 74. We have mail. Joe Hendry has extended his deal with NGW. So, what about the storylines? Uh, I was just. I said I was going to have. Right, that's. Kyrie, B. Priestley, and Nixon Mule. Should have had that. Okay, right, I need to add some workers to this. No, that's the wrong button. Let's add Adam Da Silva. Plays a major role. Let's also add Chris Andrews to that. And then this next match will progress that storyline. Now then, what about my locker room? Where's the... Where's that again? Backstage, here it is. Um, uh, the backstage rules are having a positive effect. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Is there anything I can do? Transport was organised, and then that will yeah that's that will help a little bit. But yeah, we've got a lot of work to do. Anyway, just continue on for GGW Solid Four, and then, of course, the big <laughs> end of month show, Ring of Honor Wrestling. 4,289 people in attendance for a 65 rating. Cody, I assume, Rhodes and Will Ospreay defeated the Briscoe Brothers for an 82. New Japan Pro Wrestling, 6,663 people in attendance for an 80 rating. Katsuyori Shibata defeated Alex Shelley for an 81. Attack. Ah, oh, yeah, that was the company that's causing us problems, isn't it? 72 in attendance for a 37 rating. Charlie Sterling defeated Mark Andrews to retain the Attack Championship title for a 43 rating. So our show ratings aren't that much worse than Attacks, and they are going to be they are spending more money on their production. So they it might be worth checking out their bank balance actually, because I don't think it's going to be looking that good. Lucha Underground 2,646 in attendance for a 58 rating. Pentagon Dark defeated Rey Mysterio, Hitokiri and Killshot to retain the Lucha Underground Championship title for a 63. We have Mail. Zack Sabre Jr. extends his deal with Progress and it's not exclusive so that's okay. So I did say, let's take a look at Attacks Finals, this guy bet they're not good. 38,000, okay so they are actually staying in business. Not good for us because they are hurting our. It's them, I think it is. If I look at the production, where is it? Where is that again? Down here. I think it's them that are. Oh, and Bellatrix. Okay, so I, I still believe Attack and Bellatrix are going to be going through their money quite quickly, and we're not going to be, so that's going to be a bonus for us. New Japan G1 Climax 36,124 in attendance. For an 88 rating, Hiroshi Tanahashi defeated Kitsuyori Shibata for the G1 Climax title, and it's an 86 rating, so that's good. Stardom Masters Tour, 842 in attendance for a 58 rating. Io Shirai and Konami defeated Santana Garrett and Hiro Matsumoto for a 63 rating. They got the main event correct that time. WWE SummerSlam 2017, 19,028 in a sellout at the Madison Square Garden. No, sorry, MA Garden, the New England. Yeah. There's more than one garden in America, and it's 77 show rating. In the main event, Kofi Kingston defeated Braun Strowman to retain the WWE Universal title. For a 72. Ooh, okay. They, um, yeah. New Japan Pro Wrestling, 6,343 in attendance for an 84 rating. Kenny Omega and Mark Briscoe defeated Silas Young and Ricochet for an 86. It's mostly, it is a Japanese company, and yet they're using a lot of overseas talent in their main events. Hmm, okay. 
start a Masters Tour. 818 people in attendance for a 66 rating, so that was better. Kyrie Hojo defeated Santana Garrett to retain the Wonder of Stardom title for a 76. Yes, that was better. And WWE Raw. 11,919 people in attendance for an 80 rating. Seth Rollins defeated Baron Corbin by disqualification for an 80. WWE NXT. 3,315 in attendance for a 61 rating. And Bobby Roode defeated Akam for a 66. Okay. And WWE SmackDown. 11,503 in attendance for an 84 rating. And finally, they've done something which looks like a main event. <laughs> Bray Wyatt, or the consumer of terrestrial entities, defeated Seth Rollins for an 89. <laughs> I got that. I don't know what it was about that line, but that really made me laugh. He is the consumer of terrestrial entities, yes! Oh god, that was that was funny. That really did make me laugh. Uh, right, we have GGW Solid 4 tonight. And a lot of very unhappy people. Danny and Zaya are working elsewhere. Where are they actually working? Does it tell me if I click on them? No, okay. 64% locker room morale. No locker room incidents this time. Thank Christ. Oh, okay. All oh, right, I can. I can do something. Hardlines. My way or the. I didn't realise about this. I should have looked this up. My way or the highway. You assert your authority by saying that anyone who isn't happy working for you can walk out right now and get their release. This gives an instant boost to my credibility and improves backstage behaviour. The downside is that all the releases are instant. Okay. But we haven't got a low enough backstage rate. Clear the air. You allow anyone who is unhappy to make their complaints public. This relieves some of the tension, makes all complainers a little happier. The disadvantage is that it automatically gives a small penalty to the locker room atmosphere. Okay. You discreetly meddle with the relationship between two members of the locker room. This can be used in a positive way, in a negative way, or just to see what will happen. With the unpredictable nature of human relationships, who knows? Public firing. You very publicly fire someone in front of the whole locker room. This makes you f more feared, but makes an enemy out of the person fired. The overall effect on the backstage atmosphere depends on the workers' relationships. Okay. Rib. I can pull a rib on someone. This has the chance of improving locker room morale and possibly making the target happier if he or she sees a funnier side, but it may go the other way. How about we go with medal? And let's say... Um, let's do this with Chris Andrews and Luke Phoenix. Where is Luke Phoenix? There he is. Positive meddling. They now have a strong friendship. Yes. Yes. Good. Very good. We now have... That's good news for us. Maybe I should start doing that as more often. Anyway. Um, 34 fans are expected for this one. Pick the best venue. I would be surprised if that's all we'd see an increase of. Anyway, let's add an angle. We already know what we're going to do as a um, match. So I wonder if... Oh, let's just do a freestyle angle. Um, Paul... Let's not do two capitals. Introduces the show. Ten minutes. Paul, to leave the script on and see what he can do with the script. And the match, we already already talked about this last time out. So 30, it's going to be Adam Da Silva versus Chris Andrews. Um, it's going to be storytelling. Open. Try uh, probably a script would be best. Slow build. There we go. Chris Andrews versus Anna De Silva. And of course, Adam Bullivant. And also Aaron 
cool. Thanks for fans in attendance. Because of course he does. We need to make sure that they feel like we appreciate them because we do. We, we need every single last one of them. Entertainment. Save. That'll be the show. Uh, Aaron Paul introduces it. Adam De Silva will face Chris Andrews and then we'll have Aaron Paul thank the fans. So let's run the show and see how we get on. Okay. Strong start. Got the crowd hotter. Low locker room morale still hurting, obviously, because it's, it's still low. Um, 29 rating. Um, that's acceptable. In a decent match, Chris Andrews defeated Adam De Silva in 29 minutes and 58 seconds by pinfall with a TKO. Mixed martial arts gimmick for Adam De Silva is great. Adam De Silva seemed off his game apparently. Uh, the match got the crowd hotter. Adam De Silva had an in-ring performance of 44. Chris Andrews 34, and the new Dawn storyline has advanced. But this segment has advanced but it lost heat damn it um, dirt sheet good things for star quality chemistry motivation there for both guys um, and the silver also got good gimmick high morale and star quality uh, sorry high morale and good gimmick as well and the silver holding back inconsistency low locker room Chris Andrews hold back low morale and yeah uh, we can start to get some friendly relationships going though that locker room morale will, will, will uh, increase um, so yeah there we go um, 43 was the end, end match rating so that was okay that was okay and uh, freestyle Aaron Paul uh, says thank you to the fans um, nothing specific to mention about it dirt sheet good gimmick very hot crowd 31 rating, so 26. Yeah. Okay. Impact Wrestling held a show. 2,777 people in attendance for a 58 rating. Lashley, Eddie Edwards, and James Storm defeated Alberto El Patron, Homicide, and EC3 for a 76. Yeah. Okay, so our show was, was okay. Uh, it's. They are doing bad ratings at the moment, but hopefully once we, you know, just clear that low locker room morale, hopefully we'll start to see at least three or four points improvement just by doing that. Um, yeah. Out of interest, has that improved us any at all? Yeah, we're on four. Morale, uh, momentum is now on ten. We're two. Any improvement on the estimated costs? 878, okay, that's good. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to do this again. I, I can't see that working out. So I'm gonna have to maybe cut it down to sh two shows a month just to get, you know, one popularity a month. That might have to be all I can do. But we'll see, we will see. Anyway, next show will be GGW Over the Limit 2017. So let's get on to that. Ring of Honor Wrestling. 4,077 in attendance for a 63 rating. Will Osprey defeated Jay Briscoe's for a 74. But even better than that was Mark Briscoe defeated Cody Iasim Rhodes for 87. And we have Mail. The head. Book of Position of Ice Ribbon is now available. Thanks, but no thanks. New Japan Pro Wrestling, 6,133 in attendance for an 87 show rating. And the Dynamite Express defeated Taishi and Hiromu Takahashi for a 90. That's okay. We have mail. Lucha Underground. Carly Perez and Joey Ryan have begun dating. Lucha Underground. 2,846 people in attendance for a 59 rating. London, Son of Havoc and Killshot defeated Dante Fox, Mariposa and Phoenix for a 67 rating. And now it's time for us to book Over the Limit 2017. Adam Cole's working elsewhere, Candice is working elsewhere, Kyrie is working elsewhere, Matt and Ricochet are also working elsewhere. Mark Manson. Uh, suspend. 
Oh yeah, I can't do that. Um, uh, stern warning. Get worse. Oh, brilliant. <coughs> and that has hurt the... Right, locker room controls. Let's try and meddle. Positive meddling. Adam Boulevard. And I wonder if I can heal the wounds between Eddie Ryan and Adam Boulevard. Let's give that a go. Had no effect. Damn it. I tried. 37 fans are expected here this time. Pick the best venue. How good is Luke on the mic? 55. How good is Chris Andrews on the mic? 61. Okay. I'm going to do an angle because this is uh, the end of the month. It's going to be interview hype. It's going to say that Chris Andrews. Well, I think I'll keep on a script. We'll be hyping as much as Luke Phoenix. And the match, well, these two can go all night, but it's going to be for half an hour. It's for the GGW World Championship, and it's going to be Luke Phoenix and Chris Andrews. There we go. Uh, the winner will be Luke Phoenix. Storytelling. Open. Call it in the ring with the slow build. And Adam Boulevard is going to be the road agent. I'm also going to do Aaron Paul, thanks to the fans. There we go, that covers the minimum that we need. Aaron Paul. Entertainment. Let's just take them off that and hope it works. So there we go. That will be Over the Limit 2017. Chris Andrews will hype his match against Luke Phoenix. We will have that match. Chris Andrews versus Luke Phoenix and Aaron Paul, thanks to the fans. So, away we go. Chris Andrews had an interview hyping his upcoming singles match with Luke Phoenix. Strong start. Angle got the crowd hotter. The new Dawn Storyline has lost heat. Um, low morale and low locker room morale, obviously. The match itself. In a bout that had good heat and decent wrestling, Luke Phoenix defeated Chris Andrews by pinfall. Luke Phoenix makes defense number one of his GGW World Championship title. Uh, the match got the crowd hotter. Advanced with the segment, didn't lose heat. Chris Andrews had a name with points of 37. Luke Phoenix, 51. Uh, slowly building the match well. Star quality and chemistry was good for Chris. But yeah, the low morale is really going to be a problem now. Uh, yeah, that was 47. Okay, it's, it's alright. And... Aaron Paul, thanks to fans, featuring Aaron Paul, didn't do well with a script for a 22 rating. Ah, uh, Tony 29. Right, wait, I've, I am floundering at the moment, but uh, let's make a speech. Should have been doing that after all of the weekly shows as well, but I forgot all about it. Uh, Chris Andrews pointed out as a good example, and Erica Sell given some encouragement. Seem pleased, seem pleased, seem pleased. Cool. I think what we're going to have to do is cut back the weekly shows to monthly, um, do two shows a month, hopefully build popularity up by one a month, uh, and we hopefully we won't be losing too much money on that. Um, that's probably going to be the best way of doing it for the moment. Um, but at least that, at least this month has actually got us rolling in terms of popularity. Um, despite the pretty poor shows, we are actually increasing our popularity. I mean, we 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 started with nothing. We're doing 30 fans, so everything at the moment is going to be increasing. That we only did 35 fans for the last show as well, so we didn't see an increase in ticket sales, which is a not good. Anyway, New Japan. 3,000 in a sellout, 90 rating for Kazuchika Okada defeated Tomohiro Ishii, uh, 95 rating overall. 
Stardom Masters Tour. 838 in attendance for a 61 rating. Kairi, Hojo and Konami defeated Io, Shirai and Blue Nikita for a 70. See if they just keep either Kairi, Hojo, Io, Shirai or um, uh, Mayu Iwatani in, that, in the main event scene, they should do okay. We have mail. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. has been loaned to ROH. Adam Cole has received an offer from BJW. So has Ricochet. Cody Rhodes has received an offer from DDT. And Marty Skull has received a contract offer from New Japan. In the end though, the miscellaneous was almost on target, but the workers obviously, yes, well, that's what's cost us. Well, me, that's because I went for it. But uh, show costs, yeah. Um, it's going to have to be cut back, isn't it? We can't do solid every week it's just not it's just not feasible so let's just schedule that back for a moment and it's going to be monthly wednesday week two save and uh save and exit yeah there we go uh we tr i tried to get the money i tried to get the popularity rolling but hopefully now um Hopefully we won't be losing anyone near as... The problem is, if I don't do two shows a month, it will take so long to get any popularity going, it will be rather dull. Um, but then again, we'll stay in business. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll continue with two shows a month until we end up with maybe less than a thousand at the end of the month. Hopefully by then we'll have like six or seven popularity and then if, if I have to I'll cut it down to just the, the monthly shows. But um, yeah, I mean we've, at least we have increased the popularity. What's the actual official popularity then without with the decimal point involved? 4.1, okay. I mean we've only increased it by two by doing five shows. God, the popularity in this game really increases slowly. I'm gonna take a look online and see if there's like any ways to go grow companies faster because I've something I'm, I'm assuming something has uh, received a rework since uh, the previous game uh, because it's not building popularity in the same way that it used to so I'm really gonna have to maybe just look into that and see if there's something I'm not knowing or not noticing but there we go um, yeah overall it could have been worse really could have um, but yeah, at the moment, it's definitely this that is killing us. Oh god. god. It might be worth just... It, we might have to come down to the point of getting... Well, look at Eddie Ryan. is causing a lot of problems for us at the moment. Actually, it's getting involved in a lot of these problem issues. Um, yeah, let's... Okay. Just for the sake of our locker room morale, we're going to have to do this. Uh, Eddie Ryan is going to have to. I'm going to have to negotiate. Can I? How do I terminate the contract? Contract. Ah, yes, yeah, this is net release. Yep. Uh, it's going to have to be as funny as it was. It was just can't. Um. I just need to increase that. Ugh, I don't want to do this. Really, but we need to do it. We just need to increase that. Right, how's the backstage look now? Wow, 166. Oh, Christ. This is turning out to be hard to get going. Maybe if I just uh, keep on working on the friendships, that will just that will just go up. Um, but uh, once we do, that should start to see us do some better shows. Um... Yeah, but that's that's it for now. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to hit like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to see more from me, me, Chunny of GG, you can find the Chunny of GG playlist here on the Gibbon Gamers website. Uh, I'm also playing uh, Hearts of Iron 4. I'm also doing Hot Laps. And uh, I also did Train Simulator 2018 video recently. But uh, you can find more than just me here. You can also find John Joe playing lots of games, Broken Sword 5, South Park Stick of Truth, uh, Kruger's around, uh, he is playing uh, Diablo 3, uh, his, uh, chiefly at the moment, that's his main game. You can find all of us, all of the admins here at Given Gamers, 
Uh, and that is uh, mostly going to be GTA 5 at the moment. We're also uh, going to be starting other games soon. Um, and besides YouTube, you can find us on Facebook, where we are doing all sorts of things. We do themed videos, we do um, music, we do Music Mondays, we do Fact Fridays, we do news, we do reviews, uh, just other wacky stuff. Um, you can also find Weathers90 there posting clips from Formula One on a near daily basis. Uh, Jack RS recently published here a league race from Forza Motorsport 7 onto there. Uh, Cerberus is getting involved as well now. He is uh, he's posting all sorts of news uh, and trailers. Um, and Darren B in HD is also just around, <laughs> just posting weird things. Uh, it seems to have uh, seems to fixate on the weirder side of gaming. Uh, does DB in HD? So we are also on Twitter at Given Gamers, and that's uh, puts up succinct po succinct posts, not succinct succinct posts of when we're actually posting. Uh, particularly onto YouTube, it automatically generates it. So if you miss the YouTube, maybe you won't miss the Twitter. Uh, hopefully, that's the idea behind that. And um, the other main places are Twitch and Mixer at Gibbon Gamers, where uh, there's uh, lots of live streaming of Diablo 3. Uh, Hearts of Iron 4 gets live streamed. I may start live streaming Total Extreme Wrestling 2016 as well. The issue with me doing that is the fact that the game runs in windowed mode. And uh, despite my searchings in the past on previous Total Extreme Wrestlings, I don't think I can change that. But you never know. I might. I'll give it a go and see what I can see. Um, but yes, yeah, that was it. That was um, GGW uh, for the month of August in 2017. Hopefully, uh, I can start to mi minimise the losses to our profit. Uh, but we also need to start doing better shows because I have a feeling we will grow faster if we do better shows. At the moment, our shows are getting the job done, but they're not getting the job done well. That's because of morale. That is my mission. Improve morale. But until then, I, that was me, me, Chani of GG. Bon voyage, Gibbons. Yeah.